Welcome to Women in the Arena podcast, the podcast celebrating women doing extraordinary things in plain sight. I'm your host, Audra Egan, and our mission is to elevate the value, strength, and resilience each woman brings to the world. Without further delay, let's go ahead and start the show. Welcome to Season 3 of Women in the Arena podcast. I'm your host, Audra Egan, and thank you so much for being part of this community that celebrates women doing extraordinary things in plain sight. We are celebrating yet another magnificent woman today, so let's go ahead and start the show. Welcome in, everyone, and thank you so much for joining me this week. Boy, are you in for a treat. And and I know, I know I say that every week, but every week, these women that I get to speak to are just so remarkable, and I get so excited that I can't wait to introduce them to you. And Stephanie is no exception. She is a woman that literally has made her life by taking leaps of faith. She came to the U.S. in 1991 with very little, but she had a dream, and that dream has become a reality. She has built a very successful agency and has been in business for 25 years, and she has worked with several large name organizations to build their brands. It is truly my pleasure and my honor to introduce to you Stephanie Tuin. Stephanie Thank you so much for being here and welcome to the show. Audra, I am so excited to be on your show. I've been listening to other podcasts of fantastic women you had, and I'm really humbled to be a part of uh, this family of fabulous women. And, you know, and, and you know what? And I'm going to stop there for a moment and say thank you for saying that it's a family because that is exactly what I've been trying to build. I've been trying to build a community and and thank you for acknowledging and recognizing that because that's that that is my vision that is definitely my vision to build this as a community to lean on each other and and thank you for becoming a part of that i am beyond excited well i want to tell your story because you have such an amazing and remarkable story and first of all people may hear that she does not have an american accent i may have alluded that to to that in the beginning. And she is originally from Provence. So Stephanie, tell us a little bit about your early life and what led you to come to the U.S. I know it's uh, it's an interesting trajectory, right? From Provence to New York City. (laughs) A lot of people say, why did you leave Provence? Well, I I, I didn't make it directly from Provence to here. But yes, I grew up in, uh, in a restaurant. I had like this storybook childhood, you know, or in the countryside of Provence, not knowing it was special, by the way, it was just my environment. My parents had a restaurant, so I grew up learning to cook, I, uh, to transfer olive oil from large jars to small bottles, to uh, uh, siphon wine into bottles, to do all sorts of work that uh, parents who have a restaurant do with their children to keep an eye on them. So without knowing it, I learned a trade. Uh, obviously, I, being you know uh, a rebellious teenager and so far, said I will never ever work in a restaurant in my life because it is a hard life. Uh, and I moved to Paris, worked in a big agency, then uh, decided to move to New York, and opened. I'm I'm doing a shortcut here, but open an agency specialized in food and wine. What happened was I was in Paris working in a large financial institution. I was making a lot of money. I had a beautiful apartment and I was miserable. And I thought, you know, Paris is no longer working for me. I enjoyed it for a few years, but I didn't like the gray sky. I was not... I just, I wasn't happy there. And I thought, 
I know you take yourself everywhere, but then you can put yourself in a situation where it's more supportive of who you are. And I went to New York on a vacation with my best friend. Loved it. Felt so wonderful in New York. I felt like I could shake my history, my shell. I didn't bring with me, you know, my, my family history, the French history, the, the French way of doing things, which is at the same time creative, but also very rigid. I felt free and I came back to Paris and I thought, that's where I need to go next. So it took me a few months. Um, I started to figure out, okay, how am I going to go there? At that time, I didn't think looking for a job from Paris, you know, would be easy. So I packed up two suitcases, my comforter. <laughs> <laughs> and I moved to New York because my uh, best friend was actually already there. So we, uh, we became roommates with two other girls. And I started to meet a lot of people in New York and one after the other. And I, I, I love that so much about the American way of being that I would meet someone and they said, I cannot do anything for you, but go meet this person or talk to this person. And lo and behold, I landed in an agency, a PR agency, a large one, where I became the international manager working on all sorts of accounts in a large firm. And again, you know, the large, the size matters for me. I am much happier in a smaller community than a large community, even though I love New York. But to me, New York is a village <laughs> in a way. And um, a chef knocked at our door, wanting PR and initially we worked with him, but he said, this is too big of an agency. It's too expensive. And said, so why don't you open your agency and I'll help you. And here's a second leap of faith. I, you know, scratched my head for a moment, just talked to my husband, who was a photographer. And we talked and talked, said, why don't we open our company together? You'll do the visual design photography. I'll do the PR marketing. And because I love food and wine, that's the industry I am going to specialize in. And that's what we did. We started with uh, credit cards, debts, you name it, but we were determined to make it work. And we did make it work. Uh, and little by little, we added people who were talented and de dedicated to doing good around them and working with clients in a way that we never feel like they are a client on a pedestal. We're a team. We're partners. We work together. We're, we're not going to say yes, 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 because we're afraid to lose the budget. We're going to say, no, this is not going to work for you, or we can do this better, or we can get better results. So we really work together as a team. And again, this idea of family community, you know, create all around us kind of a circle and enlarging the circle making it bigger and bigger. And uh, in this circle, we bring all members of industry and we all work together. Well, you uh, you have just shortened up a, a, a very wonderful journey into the cliff notes. So I want to make sure that people hear what what it has taken for you to chase the dream. Because you have this idea that you have, you don't give yourself limitations ever, ever. Well, yes. I, like everybody, I'm scared. I wonder, is this going to work? Is this a good idea? But then the one thing I've learned to do is really listen to this little voice inside, not the one in your head who's always judging you and others and say, oh, no, you can't do that. But the one in your belly, in your center, you know, which says, this is where you need to go. And, uh, and when I was in Paris, again, with a very cushy life and I went to New York. I had no visa. I had a tourist visa. I had a suitcase, <laughs> you know, that and your that comforter. Was it. And, and my your... comforter. I still and... have it. <laughs> and your comforter. <laughs> and and you took such a leap of faith and believed so much in what you 
felt like you had to do, you didn't, you skipped this part. You came yes. to New York with one way tickets. That's right. I had at the time you could do it. You can't anymore. But right. I bought one way ticket. I, I just knew this was going to work. And I did something that was so not like me. I gave all my books away. And my friends were like, you're giving your books. I said, yeah, I'm not coming back. I'll buy new books over there, you know. So, <laughs> so uh, yes, it it was. But at the same time, the more I was planning, you know, my trip and uh, packing my suitcase, saying goodbye to everyone, it felt so right. And this is to me what has. It's like the 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 line that I use in my life all the time. The the um, sorry, I'm, I can't find my words just right now. It's the um, it's the path that I follow. It's like following this energy and and thriving. So you cannot, if you stay in a place where you're comfortable but you're not expanded, then you are shrinking. <laughs> and if you're shrinking, nothing great can happen. And then you live your life a pale version of the life you could live. But if you listen to that little voice and follow it, and I'm not saying it's easy, but to me, it's easier than choosing to shrink. Yes. So, <laughs> and shrink and be miserable. Be miserable, have people miserable around you. It's a uh, sort of, and we've we've used this philosophy with my husband, with my team, with my company, you know, again and again and again. Uh, we've how we have clients, how we choose our clients for the agency. We we want to gel with them. We we want to work with people. I say who have a soul. It's not just the product. It's also who's behind it. Is it, you know, are, are we going to be working together? Are we going to have this community that feeds us, feed each other? Again, m moving away from limitation. A lot of my clients are my friends. I stay at their house. They stay at mine. You know, we see each other. We counsel each other. It's uh, It goes beyond a, a work relationship because we've worked together for years and we've been through a chunk of life <laughs> together. And I love working with people who also do not set limitations or do not buy into the limitations because we all think, oh, no, that's all I can do. And then you realize, no, I can expand more. I have more to discover. I have more to share. I have more to give. So you have, you've built a life. You've built an agency. You've built your own community a, a continuous thing around this theme of no limitations. Mm -hmm. and, and what has really inspired me quite a lot about your organization is that you've never put the bottom line first, ever. That is, the, that is like the last priority on your list. Your first priority, is, as you and I have discussed, has always been what's the right thing to do? Yes. What's the right thing to do and who do we want to do it with? And what has, ins what has inspired that philosophy? Because the reason why I ask this is because that's not the easy path. Many people would say, just, just manage to the spreadsheet, just manage to the balance sheet. And you went completely the opposite way and said, I'm not going to manage that way. Well, one thing is I didn't move here to live through a spreadsheet, right? <laughs> <laughs> I am... Uh... Uh, flying to New York, starting a new life and uh, working in, you know, starting my own agency. And from the very beginning, I knew that we were going to work with people we would get along with, people we shared values with, people who would value us the way we value them. Uh, there wouldn't be a hierarchy. There wouldn't be a... a a command, a control, it would be we are a team. And sometimes we've we've worked with clients for a period of time and there would be a new direction. A new director would come in, make our life miserable, 
And even if it was a large budget, we resigned. Oh, because wow. That's pretty brave. No, you know, to me, it's actually not brave. It's, again, the philosophy of either you expand or you shrink. If you spend hours every day worrying about when is the next phone call going to come, is this person going to be nasty to me, to my team? Are they going to be ridiculously demanding? Uh, are they going to challenge everything we do? Then you, you waste hours of your time and you poison yourself. All these thoughts and all these, this, it, it's poison. So in fact, when you cut the poison, <laughs> Well, life comes back. It's fantastic. Then you have room for beautiful things to happen. And I'll tell you, in the 25 years of business, we have never not replaced a bad client with a good client. It's always happened. That's pretty, that is pretty remarkable. I'm, and I know that that is not by accident. It's again, because you've built this life and this business around the philosophy of there's no limitations. And we're not going to have anybody in our sphere of influence that is going to poison the positivity. You always have that focus of, I want to do the next right thing. Right. And, and, and you've, you've done that in your life and in your agency, and you've influenced your clients in the same way. And that's pretty special. And they've influenced me too. You know, it's really a, a two-way street. Um, and my team, I'm, I am, I am amazed by who they are and how they've grown and the creativity they have, the dedication they have. And it's, uh, it's also very inspiring to me to see people around me grow and, and help me grow as well. We, we always learn, right? Otherwise, again, we're in the shrinking mode. I do not like the shrinking mode at no. all. <laughs> no, yeah. no. But, and, and it's really, it may not be the best business model. They always say, you know, add to what you have. But if you have a, a client that doesn't work anymore, uh, it's so much better to, to cut that relationship and start to one that is a real relationship and that's going to nurture you, your philosophy, your, your team, your people. And um, my accountant highly disagrees with that <laughs> philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> Accountants yeah. are supposed to degree, disagree yes. with that philosophy. Every time I said, so we're going to not work with this client anymore. Are you crazy? It's a big client, it's a big budget. I said, yeah, but it's also a, a, a huge, we live through misery So with them. So why do that? And, and to me, it's also been a philosophy with my, my team. You know, last year we had a young woman who started with us and she wasn't thriving. And so we had a coffee and I told her, listen, you're not happy. You are not expanding. You're not thriving. And she was like, no, you're right. I said, what are you doing? Go somewhere else. I'll help you. I'll support you. I'll, I'll give glowing reviews. Use me as a, a, a reference, you know, so go find your way. And I didn't want to lose a full-time person that then I would take, you know, months to recruit again, but she's thriving now where she is. And it makes me happy to see that. And we have a new person who's thriving with us. So it's again, a, you know, you cut the bad, what doesn't work. I don't want to say bad, but the relationships that are no longer working, maybe they worked at some point and they no longer do. Uh, and it's really, and has nothing to do with the money. This episode is sponsored by Belleville Capital Management. When you need a friend in the small business arena, reach out to Belleville for your planning, lending, and investment needs. A friendly consultant will help you find the solutions that you are looking for. Belleville Capital Management, a friend to small business. You know, I, I, even though in, in this context, I know that we're specifically talking about business, but this is also the same philosophy that you've applied to your life. Mm -hmm. And you've influenced your team around you to apply this philosophy to their lives. That if it doesn't work, don't keep chasing after something that is no longer serving you. 
and go and find something that does. And I find that is that you are reinforcing that to your team and having them do that in their own personal lives is something that is not just life changing, but it's world changing. Have, have you seen personally, besides the young woman that, that you knew wasn't happy, which I think is such a, a, a thoughtful gift that you gave her to, to take her under your wing and say, I want you to be happy. And if I can't make you happy here, let me help you be happy somewhere else. But besides that, situation. Is there other growth that you've seen amongst your team that just by being you and and living this philosophy truly and fully, you've seen their lives transform in front of you? I I can't, you know, uh give myself the credit for this, but I I I do believe that I created an environment where everybody is allowed to be themselves. And everybody is adhering to this collaborative community uh, sense. So, yes, I've seen people telling me, you know, they would come as a new recruit and and said, oh, my boss used to yell at me or we'd go to do an event in a city and we'd all bug together in the Airbnb and they would say, oh, I would never sleep in the same house as my boss, you know, in the previous life. It's like, because I, I don't believe in, in hierarchy. I believe in collaboration. So I've seen around me people, uh, really thrive and, and enjoy their, their job and their life and become amazing professionals and, one of them, you spoke to her, Marissa, who started as an account coordinator, was always so entry level, always so hardworking. From the beginning, I saw a gem and she's now a vice president, you know, and I, to me, she's, she's a partner in the agency. I will not make decisions without running them by her because we together, we've been working for so long to, bring the agency where it is today, I would never make a decision without talking to her. But so that's what I've seen. You know, I don't want to take credit for the way they are because it's them, it's not me. And they put themselves in this environment. You know, it's like we, by, through interviews and so forth, suddenly we, you meet, a, you know, it's like, this is where I want to work. So it was their choice. And, and they bring their own culture and their own uh, uh, passion into our uh, our pot. <laughs> um, but yes, do I see people thriving? And I'm always sad when they leave because, you know, we become so close. But at the same time, I, I love that they have opportunities to, you know, grow even more. Well, you sound like we all want to come and work for you because who <laughs> wouldn't love that environment? But, but what I... What I want the, to make a message clear is that, like I said, you've run your entire life this way. And I know that there are many people in the audience right now that are listening going, I, I want that. I, I want to live without limitations. I want to cut relationships, jobs, situations out of my life that no longer serve me because we all have them. That's, yes. just, that's just being human. We all have them. But there are people listening right now that are like, I want to, I don't know how, or I'm scared, or I don't know where to start. Since you've spent a lifetime practicing this, how would you advise those that, are, that want to live that way, but just don't have any idea what to start with first? So you said a very important word, practicing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's uh, so it's it's a frame. You have to train your mind or train yourself not to listen to that part of your mind because we all have it. I have it too. Like when I I cut a, a very lucrative client from, I have jitters for a moment, but then I look at the other side of the scale and like. Anxiety, depression, fury, uh, uh, 
you know, all these horribly negative feelings that are poisoning me, us, my team, then the decision is clear. So I, I, the advice I would give to people is just sit down with yourself and look at the situation. Is it, put it in a scale, is it worth the negativity, the poisoning, the, is that worth it? And I know sometimes it's very difficult. I've seen people divorcing and they, they couldn't get to do this because they had children, no money. And then they suddenly, the whole new life happened. Because I, I really think when you, when you cut what doesn't work, you allow the plant to grow and we're plants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have roots. <laughs> we, we grow and then we become mature and, uh, and so I would say, just, just trust yourself. It, it trusts that your decision is the good decision for your own health and the health of people around you and find people who are going to support that. You know, there were people around me who said, Oh, you cannot go and live in New York. You don't know anything. And I, so I, just didn't listen to these people. <laughs> I found the person who said, wow, this is so exciting. Well, come visit you. Okay, then I can have those discussions, you know, because it fed what I wanted to hear. <laughs> and yeah. you let go of the other uh, people momentarily or forever. You know, we all have people, projects, situations that are toxic. And if we take a moment to look at them face to face and and cut the bullshit just okay where am i here and what do i need to do to get to the next step well take that next step it will happen well i think that and i've said it many many times over the last year even though this past year of a pandemic did not feel like a gift it has been and i know that when i when people have heard me say this, they think I'm crazy and I'm okay with that. But the the main reason that I say this over and over and over again, that it's a gift is because it all made us sit down and stop. I, I mean, I was no longer on planes. I was no longer just distracting myself with activity. It, it was just activity. And you, when you quiet down, you can't distract yourself anymore. So I, I really believe, and I've started to acknowledge and recognize over the past year, what kind of evolution has happened specifically for women. Because over the past year, if one of the largest groups that were affected by the pandemic and losing jobs and what have you has been women. And it's allowed women to sit and be quiet and figure out what in the world they really, really want. And many of them are doing exactly what you've said is be quiet with yourself and be truthful with yourself and decide what's not working for you anymore and being brave enough to discover what, what will work, even if you have zero idea how to get there. I mean, that's what I love about your story. You had zero idea of what you were going to do when you went to New York. No idea. I knew, I knew one person. You knew one person. <laughs> You knew one person, you didn't even have a work visa. You had a tourist visa. I mean, you couldn't technically work. You had no idea, but you somehow followed the breadcrumbs and you chased your passion. Same exactly. thing with your agency. You had no idea you were going to open an agency. You started with one client that said, hey, why don't I work with you? And you trusted yourself and you trusted your gut. I think if more of us did that, then... If we lived our authentic lives, first of all, we'd be a whole lot happier. And I think that the world would be a much, much happier place because you'd have happy people. Yeah. And, and I don't want to paint just a rosy picture. I, like everybody else, I have moments when I am tired, exhausted, uh, depressed. But it, it doesn't last because the foundation is solid. I have practiced that uh, uh, do not believe in limitation and, and 
follow your energy, follow your truth, listen to your truth. I, I keep practicing that. So even when things happen in my life that like everybody else, I don't, you know, a lot of, you know, things, life happens. I get back on my feet faster because I've learned that it's a transition period and you can't ignore them. You have to be with them and then you move on to whatever is next. I love that you just said that, that you get back on your feet faster and that you know that it's just a transition period that you have to go through. I think that that's, that's really important. And I think that we f sometimes lose sight of that, that we feel like, oh, we're going to be here forever. Well, no, everything changes. And, and I've actually said this to my kids when they were younger, when they would ask me about growing pains. They'd say, why does it hurt to grow? I said, because you're changing. And the same thing is when in life, um, mm -hmm. growth hurts. It, yes. If it if it didn't hurt, they'd call it something else. They'd call it growth tickles or something. But it's it, it's um, growing pains is necessary for you to transition and to evolve to the next level. And and I just like I said, I love that you have this permanent belief that you are not limited, and so you will know you won't shrink yourself to fit to fit the model. No, I, I think that's. Uh... Uh, it wouldn't work. It cannot work because I know there is another path. <laughs> so I would really lie to myself if I said, no, that works. And I do that sometimes too. I, I'm not a superhero. <laughs> and sometimes I'm like, no, this is fine. This is fine. And then at some point, this little voice said, it, you know, it's not true. <laughs> 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 so I have to listen. Yeah, you're right. It's not true. So uh, what do I do now? And you're right. It's uncomfortable to grow, but at the same time, I find it way more uncomfortable to to shrink, not to grow, to live a life that is not satisfying. Because yeah. it's not satisfying for you. It's not satisfying for anyone around you. Then you cannot be there to bring some a light in, in the world. Yeah. I'm going to do something that I've never done on my show ever. But I think it's important to do this because this is an incredibly important topic because, because I think that as women, we have been unfortunately culturally trained to shrink ourselves into spaces. So I want you to imagine that you're speaking to one person out there in the audience that you have recognized is shrinking themselves to fit and you know that it doesn't work for them and it doesn't fit for them and I want you to talk to them as if you are a a loving caring friend and help them encourage them to get out of that space so I'm going to shut up and I'm going to give you the opportunity to have that conversation hmm that's a, a challenge um so Listen, I have seen you in the past few months, weeks, battling with yourself in a dark place. And I know you are, it's not depression, it's not, I know you are a strong person inside. You have lost track of your own inner strength. So I want you to take time for yourself and find a way to be a few days alone, quiet, do walks outside if that feels good to you or stay inside if you prefer and get back in touch with that inner strength, your uh, the core that is gives you the direction you need to go in your life to be happy, to be fulfilled, to be satisfied, and to spread that around you because you are, you are a being of, you are full of light. And your role as a human being is to spread that light. And you have turned it off. You, you need to 
find it again and you have the capacity to do it. You just have to let go of all the other voices, sit down, calm down and use whatever works for you. For me, it's walks outside, use a pen and paper and write down your thoughts, but get back in touch with that inner strength because you are a strong woman. You are a strong person. You are meant to be a being of light. Oh my gosh. Mm. I, um, I, I wish you guys could see our faces because I just, I, that electrified every single cell in my body. And I really, really hope that it did everybody else's too, because uh, Stephanie is such a special woman and I wanted her to speak from her heart to you because she's so inspiring and she has such a light around her and I, I hope it touched your hearts because that's exactly what I wanted and thank you Stephanie I'm so happy that you did that because I know that that was definitely outside of your comfort zone and I'm just happy you did that so thank you yes this is totally outside my comfort zone but you know what I'll, I may need to listen to this <laughs> <laughs> in my like, remember that you are strong <laughs> yes yeah. we, we may we may have to put it on a on a on a clip and and <laughs> pass it around but I wanted to make sure that that we did that because it's just such a special thing and I wanted to remind or have Stephanie remind all of you about how incredibly special you all are how incredibly strong you all are and I am so proud of each and every one of you because each and every one of you has changed and influenced my life over the last year. And I wanted to remind you of that because you have that power. Uh, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining me this afternoon and, and sharing your light with the community. I cannot thank you enough for being so generous of your spirit today. Well, Audra, I need to thank you because you created this community you with your strengths with your own light with your passion your willingness to also be uncomfortable starting a podcast in a pandemic is not a comfortable place uh, you've made it possible for so many women to listen to other women and uh, like we're saying all the women you have on your podcast are all fantastic and they are not celebrities so it, they, it's not unattainable. So I listen to a few, I'm like, yes, you're right. I love this. But I know they are not living in a huge Hollywood home with five pools and, you know, 15 servants. They're just like me. They clean, they make their bed and clean their home. So uh, thank you for creating this community. It is my pleasure. And, and, and Stephanie, I want to give you an opportunity to let people know how to get in touch with you, to talk to you about your, your PR group, uh, because you never know. We may have someone out there in the audience that says she sounds exactly like someone I'd want to work with. So how would we connect with you? Um, so we have a website, which is uh, uh, tuen.com, T-E-U-W-E-N.com. Uh, My own email, which is Stephanie with P-H, so uh, Stephanie at tuen.com. And also on Instagram, I am uh, Stephanie Tuen. It's not very original. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tried to find a, a name that would be French and American, totally failed. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Medoc and Maple, or, <laughs> you know, uh, it didn't work. And my agency, Tuen Communications, is on Instagram, Facebook, uh, all of that. Thank you. And I, and I encourage you to reach out to Stephanie because she is as lovely in person as she is on the show. So please reach out to her because she's warm and generous and, and I, I, she's a delight. So once again, Stephanie, thank you for being here with me this afternoon. I've enjoyed every second single moment of it. And thank you, Audra. Me too. I I'm, I'm feel very moved to be here with you. We shared the beautiful moment today. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. And I want to thank all of you once again for joining me this week. And we'll see you again next time. That's our show. I want to send a special thank you out to our guests, 
for being so generous with their experiences and their stories, as well as our sponsors so they can allow us to continue to tell these stories. I also want to say a special, special thank you to all of you, this community that we have been building one person at a time so we can endeavor to change the world one interview at a time. I could not do any of this without your support, and for that, I am forever grateful. I look forward to doing this again, so we'll see you all next week. so grateful for each and every one of you and your unwavering support and your continued belief in this movement that has become much bigger than me, much bigger than just a podcast. It has become this forward momentum that we are all doing together. If you are ready or you know somebody that is, that is ready to tell your story and share your value with the world, please connect with me. You can reach me at audra at womeninthearena.net. I am so honored and thankful that you will share your story with me, and I'll make sure that it is well taken care of. I will never stop thanking each and every one of you, and I cannot wait to talk to you again next week as we share another woman's story and we celebrate her doing extraordinary things in plain sight. We'll see you next time. 